previously on Sodor, the modern years. Well, bring you here, Mr. Hat. There were some things about the mid Sodor railway we couldn't find much information about. Well, we found mention of someone named Andreas, but not that many details. Who will be taking these express trains? I have purchased a new engine, Andreas, to be our new number two. I shouldn't think I need to prove myself. After all, if you engines could handle your express, I wouldn't be here. Wait, wait. Did you hear something, Andres? I don't think so. We've received a complaint from a passenger. Nonsense. I always leave right on time, not a moment sooner or later. You have to look after Falcon's trains for now, Andres. He'll look after the express. Oh no, you don't. One rainy morning, a week after Andreas' outburst, Duke returned to the mid Sodor Railway's shed. Andreas, who had been confined to the shed since then, was still sulking. As usual, his only reaction to Duke's rival was just a resentful glare. You got off lightly, you know. Lightly? Being left in this dusty shed, no one coming near me. Compared to what happened to your predecessor, yes. My predecessor? Stanley was our previous number two. He rode rough on the rails and never listened to advice. Eventually our manager got fed up with him and made him into a pumping engine behind our sheds. Codswallop, that would be a waste of money. It's more useful in having an engine confined to the shed for being unreliable. That's just dead weight. You could very well end up like me. Who was that? It came from behind our sheds. Who do you think it was? Andreas carefully considered Duke's words. Duke, could you tell the manager I'd like to work again? I'll do whatever is needed. <laughs> I'll tell him. Over the next week, Andreas did the work he was given, grumbling all the while. He had said he would do what was needed, yes, but only out of necessity. Once he was back in his rightful place, at the head of the express, he'd be safe again. He treated the trucks roughly, but was careful with the coaches. Hopefully, he thought, this would convince the manager that Good's work was beneath him. But he wasn't asked to take the express, and he couldn't help feeling jealous whenever he saw Stuart, Falcon, or Duke pass with the line's top passenger train. One morning, Andreas was waiting at Arlesborough West with the passenger train. It was a guaranteed connection with the Northwest Railway, and he was waiting for Lily to arrive with her passengers. She's supposed to be here by now. Lily steamed in a moment later, only a couple of minutes late. As she gently braked her train, she looked over apologetically. I must apologize, Andreas. I had to wait for a passenger at Callan. You had to wait for a passenger? He tripped while running for the coach. After all that, I didn't want him to have to wait for the next train. That was worth delaying my train, was it? We have to look after the people along our lines, Andreas. I made sure to make up the time en route. You'll not be leaving more than a minute late. That's not the point. If your passengers can't get to your train on time, that's their own fault. Passenger trains are too important to be delayed by some bumbling. Passenger trains or your passenger trains, Andreas? Lily looked closely at the small tank engine. As a good friend of the mid Sodor engines, she'd heard a bit about what had been going on over the last few weeks. But before she could say any more, Andreas' guard blew his whistle. Without another word, Andreas abruptly steamed out of the station. Lily, did Andreas just say passenger trains are too important to be delayed? I'm afraid so. It's not a healthy mentality for an engine. <sighs> Indeed. A moment later, a nasty suspicion struck Falcon. Following Andreas's incident with the passenger a couple of weeks ago, their manager had spoken to both him and his driver. Falcon had been shunting in the yard at the time, and had overheard most of what had been said. I checked with the station master, Andreas. He confirmed it. You did leave early. Well, it won't happen again. 
The passenger also said he'd call out to you, and your driver said he thought he heard someone calling out. Did you not hear anything? I'm afraid not, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I see. I wonder... I'm meaning to talk to Andreas about a passenger. With that, Falcon departed to take his next train. As he headed along the line, Falcon began to have doubts. Although Andreas' manner did leave a lot to be desired, that didn't necessarily mean that he was untrustworthy. But on the other buffer, their manager had taken Andreas off express duties immediately after that incident with the passenger. Surely he must have suspected something. Once he'd finished that run, Falcon was due to return with the passenger train. As he departed, he glanced back at the coach behind him. Gertrude, can I ask you something? Of course, Falcon. Were you on the express train when Andreas missed that passenger? Yes. Why do you ask? Did you hear that passenger calling out to you to wait? Funny you should ask that. Millie and I were just discussing it yesterday. Weren't we, Millie? Indeed. Now I hope you don't think we're out of line, Falcon, but... Well, we heard that passenger clearly enough. Andreas the driver did too. At least he seemed to hear something. Falcon frowned, suspicious. Do you think Andreas heard the passenger? I was right behind him, and I heard the passenger calling. It was just for a moment or two. Andreas whistled loudly as he was leaving. I couldn't hear anything over that. I see. Falcon fell silent. He was thinking of what he'd say to Andreas the next time he saw him. When Falcon reached Alsdale Station, a few minutes ahead of schedule, he found Andreas resting in the sheds. I've just had a rather interesting conversation with Gertrude and Millicent. What did they say? Gertrude was just behind you and she heard the passenger calling out for you to wait. So did your driver. So what? That doesn't necessarily mean I heard it. Oh, come on. Do you really expect me to believe there's a wall of silence between your cab and your smoke box? Even if you hadn't heard it, I very much doubt you didn't even pause to address your driver's concerns. Andreas frowned angrily. All right, so I did hear him. He was running late. It was that simple. You left early. If you'd actually bothered to stick to the timetable... Falcon broke off as he realized exactly what Andreas had said. You did hear him. So all those times you said you didn't, you were lying. How dare you? All this fuss over one passenger, anyone would think... Anyone would think that an engine would care about that passengers. But to make a mistake like this, then to try and cover it up? Like you wouldn't. Too right I wouldn't. You're an incompetent liar and a disgrace to the railway. Andreas was furious. You dare call me... I'm calling you what you are. Nothing more. Enough, both of you! The other two engines fell silent, both seething. Falcon, you should know better than to let your temper get the better of you like that. I'm sorry, Grandpuff. As for you, Andreas, I now know it was a mistake to ask our manager to let you out of the sheds. I know he will be extremely disappointed in you when he hears of this. It's your word against mine. Duke and Falcon were both shocked, but it was another voice that replied. That's just as well I heard your words, Andreas. All three engines looked over to see the manager step around from the workshop. It's a bit difficult to have a discussion about Stuart's maintenance, with you three arguing right outside. Falcon, once you're done with this train, I'd like you to take Andreas' next one. He and I will be having a little talk. Yes, sir. The manager walked over to Andreas. As I just mentioned, Stuart is in the workshops for maintenance. You're to look after his trains until he gets back. But... Andreas protested. No, Andreas, you will do as you're told. I think I need to make things clear for you, Andres. We need an engine to cover Stuart's trains while he's having his scheduled maintenance. As of right now, that's the only reason you are still running. I will not tolerate behavior like yours from any one of my engines. If you so much as put another bolt out of line, that will be the end of you. With that, the manager departed. Duke shot a suspicious look at Andreas. He's not the only one who'll be keeping an eye on you. With that, Duke departed.
Word of Andreas' dishonesty soon spread around the railway, and it wasn't just the engines who were keeping an eye on him. After hearing of what he'd done, the trucks and coaches didn't trust him at all. Once Stuart's maintenance was finished, Andreas was assigned to goods and mine trains. He didn't like that at all. One rainy morning, Andreas was bringing a mine train down to Arlesborough. As usual, he was grumbling about being stuck on goods duty. Reduced to mere trucks. Anyone would think I was some sort of half engine like that Atlas. For the trucks, that was the last straw. They had tolerated Andreas's blatant rudeness and deliberate roughness. But they liked Atlas, and hearing him casually insulted was just too much. Discreetly, so as not to alert Andreas, they began whispering and plotting amongst themselves. As the train approached Arlesborough, the trucks began holding back. Andreas found himself struggling, and his driver opened his regulator to give him more power. Oh, come on! He growled angrily. The trucks giggled. They'd been waiting for such an invitation. They suddenly bumped Andreas forward, dislodging his driver and guard. With no driver to apply the brakes, Andreas found himself picking up speed. Stop! Stop! Didn't you want us to come along? Another lie! Not like that! With a crash, Andreas burst through the buffers at the end of the line. Wheels spinning, he thudded down onto the tracks of the Northwest Railway. Panicked whistles sounded out. Lily was approaching with a passenger train. Andreas closed his eyes. Andreas opened his eyes and looked over. Lily's buffers were just inches from his boiler, and she did not look pleased at all. I know you are keen to be on time, Andreas, but on this occasion you really have gone too far. Andreas didn't reply. The rain had stopped by the time Andreas was put back on the rails. As the workmen started inspecting him, he looked nervously over at the manager, who had been supervising the whole operation. I just don't know what I'm going to do with you, Andreas. Ever since you've arrived, you've only caused trouble. Please, give me a second chance, sir. I won't cause any more trouble. To Andreas's dismay, the manager shook his head. You've already had a second chance, Andreas, and you didn't change at all. I simply don't know if I can trust you. Falcon will be taking you to the main sheds once we're done here, and that's why you'll stay until I decide what to do with you. So I shunted Andreas to the back of the shed and left him there. Our manager rearranged our schedule so that the four of us were able to handle all the trains between us. But what happened to Andreas? There's a small harbour at Arlesborough. Around the time of Andreas's accidents, the maintenance people there was looking for a new, larger steam launch. Do you mean they converted Andreas into a boat? Indeed. What about Atlas? Surely he wasn't left behind when the mid Soto Railway was closed down. Peter, Sam and Sir Handel exchanged a look. We don't really know. He was still there when we went to the aluminium plant at Peel Godred. He was bought by a zinc mine up near Craigweir, on the north of the island. Craigweir? But there aren't any railways up there. There was a tramway taking the zinc from the mines to the port in Harwick. I understand he was replacing a team of horses. <gasps> Hold on, you mean there was a whole tramway up north we didn't know about? There was, yes. Charlie didn't reply for a moment, considering this new information. Thank you for your time. With that, Charlie headed over to the station. Looks like he's got one more railway of soda to talk about in this TV series. Indeed. Meanwhile, Charlie had reached the station platform and was on the phone to his producer. Sir Handel had guessed correctly. This tramway up north did warrant investigation, and they would be able to do an episode of their documentary on it. A moment later, Charlie boarded the branch line flyer. As the train got underway, he couldn't help feeling curious. He wasn't quite sure what he'd find up in Craigweir, but he was looking forward to finding out. <laughs>